Would you like to learn how to make windblown cake? A variation of an angel food cake, but using all of the egg. Stay tuned for the next episode of Hilltop Stovetop. Hello and welcome back to Hilltop Stovetop, the show where we're teaching you how to make great meals in an ordinary kitchen. Uh, today we are once again uh, working on some um, uh, recipes out of the Coronation Cookbook uh, that was done by the Toulon United Church Circle in 1953. Uh, we're doing this in honor of Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee, which happens to be today, the day of filming. Uh, which is uh, February the 6th, um, and, but it's been 70 years since this cookbook was uh, created. And uh, we're, we're kind of recreating a few of these recipes as part of a series on Hilltop Stovetop. Now today we're working on a cake, which is actually one that as soon as I saw the recipe, I thought, oh, I wanna try that because it's got such a cool name. It's called the Windblown Cake. So you can imagine that this is something that's going to be very nice and light and fluffy. Um, it's not it's not an angel food cake because it does have egg yolks in it, um, and it but it has no oil in it at all. And but we are going to do it up in an angel food pan, so it is going to be quite uh, quite tall, or hopefully will be quite tall when we're done. And the other thing about this cake that's a little different is it's got a couple of different ingredients. First off, instead of regular flour, we're going to be using cake flour, which is a specific kind of flour. Now, normally I use just all-purpose flour, uh, but cake flour has um, lower protein levels, which means there's less gluten in it. So there's three main kinds of flour that you're going to get. One is the cake flour, which is low gluten and makes for a nice light and airy cake. Uh, then there's the all-purpose flour, which works for just about everything. And then there is a specific kind of flour called bread flour, which has a higher gluten amount in it. Um, again, in most cases you can get away with... Um, with all-purpose flour, but if you really want to become an expert at breads, bread flour is appropriate. Now, if you don't have cake flour and you want to make this recipe, that's okay. What you do is for each cup of flour, you measure out your all-purpose flour, then you remove two tablespoons of that flour and replace it with two tablespoons of cornstarch. So you end up with the same volume, but you have less gluten in it. Um, and then, but in this case, I do have the right kind of flour, uh, so we're okay there. And so we take a cup and a half of the cake flour. Now, the other thing is it calls for fruit sugar. Now, fruit sugar, um, I actually had to look it up. It's not something that you see in the stores, or at least where I shop, does not, doesn't come up all that often. The main difference is it's a little bit finer than regular table sugar, the regular granulated sugar, but it's also sweeter tasting. So what they said was you can get away with using just regular sugar, but you put in for every cup of fruit sugar, you substitute in one and a third cups of um, all uh, just regular table sugar. So I have here, uh, now it calls for one and a quarter cups of fruit sugar. I've got about one and three quarter cups of regular sugar. And then we add in a teaspoon of baking powder. And we're going to sift these dry ingredients together. Okay, well, I'm glad I didn't make you sit through all of that. It did take quite a while. Um, and I'm, I was really had me wishing for my, my youth when my mom had a, a sifter that was a hand crank thing. You put the flour in it with, and it had three sieves in it. And then it had a little crank that you would, um, would kind of force the flour through that. And I always wondered why we bothered doing that. But uh, because in a lot of flours that we get now are what they call pre-sifted. But it makes sense when you're making this cake because this cake flour is such a different consistency than our regular all-purpose flour. Sifting it is really lightening it up quite a bit. 
So now the next thing, speaking of things being light, is we're going to start with our eggs. And um, in this case, we're going to separate the eggs. And I'm choosing to put the yolks into this particular bowl, which is uh, it's called a batter bowl. Uh, it's one of my Pampered Chef products. And it has uh, markings on the side. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by putting the egg yolks into there. And uh, the egg, we're going to do the egg whites separately. We are, we are going to beat them up as well. But everything is going to be so light and fluffy in this. And we're going to add to the yolks, we're going to add some water. And then you beat the egg yolks and water until it reaches one quart, which is four cups. So all on their own, we're, we're starting off with maybe a cup and a half of liquid, and we're going to beat it until it is four cups in size. If I can get this egg open, that is. There we go. And that's the beginning of the lightness in this cake. There we go. Okay, so three egg yolks, three quarters of a cup of water. And then again, thank goodness we have electricity here. It's not 1953 in Toulon. So I'm going, to, I'm going to come back when this is up to the four quarts. Um, but if in the recipe, it actually says to, um, to, 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 to beat it for, I think it's this one, it says 20, for 25 minutes or until it makes one quart. So that gives you an idea of how long it would take if we were doing this by hand. It's not going to take us nearly that long because we are going to do it electrically. But um, I'm going to beat this up to be four quarts, or four, one quart, four cups, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we are back. We've got this now. Oops, we are up to about four quarts. And now we're going to take this flour mixture and just gently add that in. And they say to all these mixtures, we're folding it together, which means that we're, we're not, we're just sort of lifting from the bottom and getting everything wet, but trying to keep as many of the bubbles in as possible here. mixture makes me think of um, the batter that I do for making madeleines, which are little cookies that are like little sponge cakes. Okay, we're back. We've got our egg whites whipped up with a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar and some vanilla. And as we know, our test for whether or not our egg whites are stiff enough is we should be able to turn the bowl upside down and they won't come out. Okay, so we did that. And now we're gonna take these and gently fold them in to this batter. And you can see that the, um, the, the um, baking powder that was in there was causing a few bubbles to happen. So we know that that is working well. And again, just pulling up from the bottom trying to keep as much volume as we can into this. And what will happen is as this heats up, these bubbles, uh, as we know, heat makes things expand. So the air inside these bubbles will expand and that will, will help the cake rise as well. Okay, so that's as much as I'm gonna do. Now we're going to put it into an ungreased angel food pan. And you'll often see that when you're doing things with egg whites, where it says to do things ungreased, as much as we would like to have it greased so that things fall out easier, 
Uh, even the fact that this has a nonstick coating on the pan can sometimes be a little bit of a problem because you don't want it to fall out too quickly <coughs> before it's had the chance to, um, to cool properly. Um, the other thing is if you add grease to it, uh, grease is the enemy of egg whites. It uh, doesn't, things don't want to, uh, to rise up when there's extra grease in it. So we'll just keep that to a, a minimum and we'll pour that in. Get every last bit out of this if we can. I have my grandmother's voice in my head telling me that there's a whole other piece of cake left in that bowl. Have a taste, yes, as we talked about in our sugar cookies, sometimes that quick little taste reminds you if you've forgotten something out of this. I'm just going to give this a quick little tap and just to make sure that there isn't any bubbles that are too big. Now we're going to put it in the oven 350 degrees for 30 minutes and this is the tricky thing. You put it in 30 minutes, 350 degrees and then you turn off the oven and you leave it sit for an hour. And so it's gonna cool right there in the oven. Now, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this one because in 1953, ovens were different than what we have now. Nowadays, they're, they're so well insulated that often they'll hold heat more than an oven from 1953 would. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, 30 minutes at 350 degrees, turn it off, don't open up the door, don't peek leave it sit for another hour. So we'll see you in about an hour and a half, find out what happens. All right, so here we are with our windblown cake. It's been in the oven for an hour and a half, half hour at 350 degrees, and an hour uh, just with the oven turned off. Now it is still quite warm. So what I'm gonna do is, um, is I am gonna let it continue to cool. I mean, it's very definitely cooked but it's still warm. So instead of taking it out of the pan now, I'm gonna let it continue to cool and uh, we will see you when it's cooled and we have a chance to take it out of this uh, angel food cake pan. So we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so we've waited till this had cooled and um, I've already run the knife around the outer edge, which causes us to be able to pop this up. And that's the beauty of an angel food cake pan. Now, the one part that we need to break away is the center. And I think that this is where it gets its windblown name. Is hopefully you can see on the overhead shot there that there is some wispiness, I'll say, to this. That's the term I'm going to use for it, is wispiness. And then we can reach down in here. and run that knife along the bottom. When you have something with this many eggs and you don't have any, you don't grease the pan, sometimes it, it doesn't fall out quite the same as that, uh, as our other cakes do. It has a feel to it like an angel food cake does, but not as deep. But I think that that's because it's uh, the whole egg, egg yolk as well as egg white. So let's just cut into this. Isn't that a lovely cake? All right, so we've got a nice fine texture, nice white cake. Like I said, it, it feels as a stickiness to it the same way as a, um, an angel food cake does, uh, but it is using up the whole egg. And actually an angel food cake probably would have taken five or six or more egg whites 
Um, so from a 1953 perspective, this is actually a very practical cake to make. It'd still be very nice and light, would go really well with some berries and cream and that sort of thing. So I hope you, today, you enjoyed today's episode of Hilltop Stovetop, where we made windblown cake from the 1953 cookbook, uh, the Coronation Cookbook from the Toulon uh, United Church Circle. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, recipe was submitted by Mrs. Sam Campbell for the, the windblown cake. And I notice on the recipe that there is a little check mark in, next to it. And that would have been something that my grandmother did um, all through this book. There's little notes uh, where she's put a little check mark if it's something that she liked. Sometimes that she's written that it was very good. Some of them she's written that they were no good. So this is one with the check mark. So I knew that that one was uh, one that she approved of. And I uh, hope that you remember to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more um, of these uh, recipes that we're doing to reenact um, recipes from 1953 for the Coronation Cookbook. And we're doing this in honor of Queen Elizabeth's Platinum Jubilee. So we'll hope to see you soon. Bye-bye for now. <music>